morning, everyone. Here's the morning report. As you know, I won't be in the office today, but wanted to get this out to you. Daytime, the daily chart showing momentum that is relatively sideways, flat, but with a negative drift. And so what we anticipate is that because we are now sitting underneath all of these moving averages, this negative drift will uh, correspond to a rejection of these regions to the north, uh, particularly this 2069.50 to 2071.50. Let's go to the four hour chart. We're going to see what the momentum looks like there. It's a little bit sloping upward. Of course, it is sloping upward into the resistance zone where it is sitting right now. Here's the thing. If it breaches because of the location, it will retest. But the breach, because of the slope, will also give us the ability to move into the next level of resistance. So what can you do? You can trade the break on this motion, but do not expect it to continue without a retrace, because that's where the larger time frames are telling us this is going to happen. If we take a look at the 30 minute chart, what we're going to see is that we are colliding into the 50. We're losing it. We're holding the weekly pivot. That's pretty interesting right there. Uh, the daily pivot is a little further to the south, but here is the weekly pivot. It's 7.30. And we are looking at a potential bounce off of this region. Notice this, still upside momentum. <clears throat> saying the same thing that the four hour chart is saying. The breach will give us a punch up into the higher levels, but they will be into rejection. Notice the slope here on the 30, pulling back into support. Everything should begin to inflect here if the chart is going to hold. If the chart does not inflect, meaning those technicals don't inflect, and it comes into this higher, excuse me, lower high, we're going to have the retrace into the level below. All right, let's take a look at the next chart, the TF. As that expands, Taking a look at what's going on in the calendar to see what we've got. Um, personal income and outlays, pending home sales, Dallas Fed Manufacturing Survey. And that's about it. We've got some bill announcements in the afternoon. But for the TF, we're looking at, let's go to the daily. We'll start there. Well, this one's got a little bit more positive momentum drifting into the midline, but still the drift fairly negative coming into a support region should bounce into resistance although this is the real resistance level if you want to see this that's the real resistance level so we're breaching it could mean that this is the particular rejection zone for this chart going into the four hour we see fairly strong inflection negative momentum Although it's pulling up out of the regions, what does this mean? This sloping action gives me positive momentum into resistance because of the location. And so we have to look at those two things together, realize that we can take the break out, but we expect to be met by sellers. Where are we sitting now? We're in the middle of the breakout because we've got a pullback into the support regions of the moving averages and a pullback there again, and a pullback there again. What are we seeing from a momentum perspective as we continue to drift to the north? We see it flattening out. There's a lot of flattening action here. So the chart is waning in terms of the strength of momentum that it is collecting. So that is moving down just a little bit. Any punches up should be sold. That's just the way that chart is looking. Taking a look at oil, we know that oil should reject the regions and move downward from this uh, aggressive momentum that it had from a few days back. This is the Yemen situation. I'm not quite sure if that's been resolved. Haven't really had the chance to look at the news there. What I can see is this. Here we have a relative topping formation, a wick that's a little bit higher than this one, but bodies candlestick bodies that are moving downward. We are sitting under 
the 50 under the weekly pivot and we are approaching the 10 and the 20 simple moving averages. All right, if we move into a four hour chart, look at the momentum here. It is still holding, but a little bit flat. All right, so that momentum is mixed. It's going to make for difficult trading. So we've got the drift down into the hold at the four hour. And there is support there that we can see. This downward drift gives me momentum, but I'm also sitting in positive trending territory. So I could have an inflection at any time combined with the fact that these two guys are very far apart. We know that that one's going to give a little bit of trouble. We're already starting to print some dojis. I don't really like the way oil is looking today at all. But if indeed we breach the regions of resistance and here we are grinding to the south and momentum is pushing to the north. If we breach these regions of about 48.40 to 48.60, we should cut right through these guys into 49.10, 49.12. I suspect somewhere around 49.24 we're going to have sellers. In the end, we are still sitting under the zero line. So all this momentum is negative. We should not have any punches up that continue without a retest that gives us a higher low. So pay attention as we make lower lows and lower highs. If we begin to reverse and make a high that breaches this one and then a low that is higher than this low, perhaps coming into this region, we know we're going to have a shift of momentum. You want to start watching it step through these 4910, 4924, 4950, 4965, and then, you know, maybe it gets into 4990. My thought is that oil does not do this. However, be prepared for what the chart is telling you. Do you see the drift here? Really linear 50. And then all of a sudden, everybody else is moving sideways. We know these guys want to collide. We know they do. And so that is an inevitability. We just don't know when. We don't know if this is going to come down to meet it or the chart is going to move up. Nevertheless, we should expect sellers wherever we are. All right. Taking a look at the NQ. Let's go to the daily here. Daily NQ looks a little bit different to the others, right? This one is uh, showing a little bit of trouble. It's well above its 50, however, and so it's coming in to collide with the 10 and the 20. That's where we should find trouble with this particular chart. Notice negative momentum in terms of location, negative slope in terms of uh, movement in terms of these lines, but positive location here. So what does this tell you? Another very messy day for the NQs. It's a very choppy chart. Look for these pullbacks off of support to take care of you. Look at the slope. See these four hour charts. That's giving us a press up. Notice the location here. So it's going to be a press up into resistance. At the point that it gets to resistance, you need to peel the longs off of there. You can trade in the direction of the slope here very, very easily. Moving into the 30 minute chart, we'll see that the slow MACD has got some nice pressure associated with it. This Negative divergence underneath, positive divergence above. It doesn't really matter there. You've got to watch these moving averages. And you have to look at the momentum indicators when they get to the same price levels. We're almost from here to here is almost the same price. Chart should bounce off of this weekly pivot. Location and momentum showing that a bounce should occur right around here as it comes into the region. This is high, that's low. It should pop up. These, a little bit of drift. You know, overall, oops, overall this chart could do very, very well if it came into this area and bounced. So you get a nice big pull off of this, but chances are 
the big picture shows a very messy chart and so watch for the pullbacks off of support to take your longs for the breaches into resistance to take your shorts draw a trend line event to help you with that and you're going to be in great shape all right really really great shape let's get to the next group I want to particularly show you Tesla and Yahoo and then we'll go to the others forgive me about that frog in my throat there all right taking a look at Tesla coming right into the trend line support holding the level already got inflection on the four hour chart looking for a little bit of momentum to catch this one <clears throat> could you take it right off of the bounce zone as it opens up if it doesn't open up before 187 you could take it right there expect that during the course of the day this will pull back just a bit because that's what Tesla has a tendency to do but you could get two cycles out of this if it pops up comes back into support holds the 184 area and you take it into 187 you can lose the 187 right there it'll come back to maybe the 185 60 area and then you can take it again and move up in the prior days high chances are this chart is going to try and recover at least into the daily pivot here sloping action fairly strong to the upside we expect buyers to step in there quite easily here's the next one I saw an article this weekend that said hey if you want to buy uh, Alibaba at a discount why don't you just pick up Yahoo because I don't know some other deal whatever the case is this chart has got a lot of momentum punching to the out to the upside take a look at what's going on here the press into the moving averages and then the press into the moving averages again gives us a higher low fast MACD and fast uh, SMIs not giving us that proper information but overall the big picture on the chart showing this slope look at how tightly these guys are bound together everything in positive trending territory could it punch up and reverse yes could it punch up and continue yes so what do you want to do you want to take a small entry at the breach if it pulls back and you get stopped out of the trade no harm no foul if it comes back in holds the 45 area you can try it again whichever the case everything looks nice and solid to the upside we've got a good moving average squeeze there the chart went sideways all of Friday into support now it's bouncing you're going to watch it to push to the upside there and I do have those levels marked in the blog let's look at Facebook since we're down here Facebook um, some people are thinking Facebook is about to roll over I'm not really sure that I see that at this juncture buyers certainly should step in here but here's the thing if we can't breach this area at 84 and we lose the weekly pivot at 8250 the chart will have downside action back into the congestion region what normally happens when a chart breaks out like this after it's been in for a while if it does not have super aggressive momentum it will drift right back into the region and pop up but take a look at these indicators they continue to move up fast macd um, not well fast macd is showing pretty well slow smi fast smi moving a little bit sideways but the slow smi and the stochastic rsi really holding this chart up in trending territory saying that if it pulls back the bounce is going to hold overall 30 minute chart showing a squeeze and then a bounce off the squeeze looking fairly ideal to take a long off of the breach of the prior day's high that should be more than fair for a good trade let's take a look at Apple this one has been moving a bit noisily for some time and it is now coming into another support region it held the daily 50 rejection right here what's this chart telling us we've got slightly negative drift 
a fast SMI and a fast MACD that points to upside momentum, but the slow MACD, slow SMI, and the stochastic RSI all telling me I'm in negative trending territory. I've got a flat 50. I'm going to come into this region, and if I do come into this region, I should reject it quite handily to put myself in a channel. This is not a pretty trading formation in the long run, not going to give us anything attractive at all. On the 30-minute chart, you may have a couple of pretty trades if it pulls way into support, and you can pick it up off the 124 area to take into maybe 125.70, and then maybe 126.45, but that is uh, a difficult one for this chart at this juncture. Now, if you notice slope here, you know we've got bounce action. The longer time frames tell us that we're caught in a trend, I mean a trading range, and so we're going to be looking for resistance here. Listen, if you take this trade and you step down into your 15 minute time frame and you've got steep momentum as it comes into this congestion area, you can hold it for the last pop into this area and then close the trade because the great steep momentum regions are going to give you upside drift that you can take advantage of. What's going on with Netflix? It continues to give us downside momentum. Now trading very tightly with the 10. What do we have here? Any kind of momentum drift. This is a little bit of a double bottom area. We've got positive momentum drifting up into this area, but again, location and formation tells me that no matter if I bounce, I will retrace this area. If I retrace into a higher low because the momentum has drifted, I'll be in fairly good shape. Else, I'm going to be continuing downward because of that negative momentum. Moving into the 30-minute chart here, what we're going to see is a very tight sideways pattern for Netflix, and I mean a squeeze of the moving averages. Listen, you're sitting under the moving averages. We've got a little bit of negative momentum. If the chart punches to the upside, and it should from this, it should punch into resistance, you've got to let it come back into a higher low and move out of the region before you take a trade in this area. It is very, very messy, particularly if you're looking at it on a 30-minute chart. If you're looking at it on a 5, you might be able to uh, find something fairly nice, but a lot of negative momentum chart coming right into the midline. So if it rejects this region at 412-ish, 414-ish or so, you know you're going to have downside in continuation. We already talked about Tesla. Let's talk about Baidu. What do we see here? Baidu is still caught in a trading range. It's a little bit under the center line of the trading region. We've got negative momentum steep slope, but we are at a bottom. Notice this chart, when the fast SMI gets to this region, has a tendency to bounce. Where's this thing going to bounce? Into resistance. If it pulls back into a higher low, you've got a nice formation. Other than that, things are going to look a little bit messy for you. 30-minute chart, squeezing action right here. If it pulls back and holds this area and you take it off of this level, look at the slope, it will take you into the resistance zone where you'll need to get out of the trade. 30-minute trading not looking too bad here because slope and location, except for that pesky slow SMI still sitting under the 50, the location tells us that we should have a little bit of punch. It is this indicator that tells us that sellers are going to be here. If they pull back to a higher low, you got yourself a great shot. But again, pretty noisy chart in the grand scheme of things. SanDisk, you know, absolutely fell out of bed last week. And Friday, it just sort of held its drift down. Don't really remember what's going on with this one. Suffice to say, earnings in a couple of weeks, something's, something's afoot certainly. And so what we have to look at here is what is SanDisk doing? 
It's moving sideways now, coming into that 10 simple moving average. Notice the level. That fast SMI, very, very low, usually leads to a bounce. So we looked for uh, swift bounce action on, I don't know, Friday maybe it was. We had a little bit and then it collapsed. It's going to be the same sort of thing. If we bounce into a lower high, and we begin to lose the levels, we expect it to head back down to the lower low. So here's the thing. You're looking at this region. If it breaches above 66, you've got yourself a shot into 67, 67, 80. If it breaches 66 and then falls right back down into 65, you've got a short lower into the 63, 56 and then the lower region into 6272. A lot of slope here, but again, relief bounce could uh, be in the mix. Uh, you got to be super careful here about this one. Don't really know if it'll, it's going to be able to handle it. It's coming up. It's sitting above the 10 and above the 20. Notice the slopes here, how they're changing as the chart begins to dance around these moving averages. We have continued upside drift. It tells us that we could drift into resistance quite easily. Location of the slow SMI telling us that we're going to reject, reject the region. All right, good luck trading everyone, and I will see you live tomorrow.